After years of hearing about just how awful the room was, I sat down last week with my wife and watched it after someone requested that I review it. It actually, it's not nearly as bad as everyone says it is. Of course, I'm lying. It's just as bad as everyone says it is. And it inspired me to start a new series called The Best of the Worst, where I'm going to slowly start reviewing some of the best, worst movies of all time. Some of those movies that absolutely are so bad that they loop around and become good again. So some of the ones I've seen in the past, the story of Ricky Trolls 2, I think I'm going to start cycling those through once a month and reviewing the best of the worst. So if you've got some recommendations, go ahead and tell me down in the comment sections for the best of the worst. But as for today, we are talking about what I hadn't seen before last week, and that is The Room, a movie so infamously bad that they just released a trailer last week for a movie called The Disaster Artist, which is all about the making of this movie based off the book from one of the actors that was in the movie and how ridiculous the whole process really was. And here I am. I finally watched it, and I'm going to talk about it. So starting off with the plot, as I like to do at the beginning of most of my reviews, in this movie, a guy named Johnny's kind of a nice guy that tries to help people out and has a stable job. He's engaged to a girl named Lisa that I guess he's been dating about seven years. But Lisa doesn't love Johnny anymore and doesn't really want to be with him anymore. But her mom thinks that he's stable, so she should stay with him. Therefore, she starts sleeping with Johnny's best friend, Mark. That's it. That's the whole plot. There's no like actual exploration of more things. There's not more complexity to it. It just kind of repeats that until you get to the third act when things start to be revealed. But that's the plot of the whole plot of the movie. None of it makes any sense. None of it explores anything. It is an astoundingly bad movie with absolutely no good ideas. And every idea that is in the movie is executed perfectly horribly, perfectly wrong. It's beautiful in that it's a thing that is near perfect in that every decision is absolutely the wrong one done to the full extent of how bad it could possibly be. But before I go into my full review analyzing this very seriously, just want to give a shout out to my patron supporters who support my channel directly financially. You can check down below in the comment section or in the description down below. There will be a link to my Patreon page. And essentially it's a way that if you like my channel, if you like my videos, my ranking videos, if you want me to do more videos like this one, what you can do is support me on Patreon and just kind of donate directly financially to my channel to be able to support what I'm doing. And one of my patrons named Jeffrey Shoup requested that I do this movie. And my patrons each month, I ask them if there's movies they want to review. When they request them, I take those very seriously. And sometimes I make videos out of them. We got one right here. If you'd like some of that extra influence um, in my channel and just want to support me, please consider helping my channel out. It really is the number one thing you can do to support my channel. And that's why we're getting this video and why I sat down to watch maybe the worst movie ever made. With all that said, let's dive into this movie and start talking about the good and the bad and all the different directions that you could possibly go with this movie. Starting off with the good, because there are a couple of good things about this movie. Uh, first off, it's incredibly entertaining. If you, if you sit down and watch this by yourself, that's a weird life choice. If you sit down and watch this with all of your funniest, most smart aleck, wise ass friends, and you watch this movie, you will have an amazing time. And absolutely, <laughs> it's pretty incredible. Second thing, it's actually quite educational in that since every decision made in the whole movie is totally the wrong decision, it's an educational piece on how to not make a movie, how to not put construct a story, how to not make characters, how to not act. Every decision they make in the movie is bad. So if you're wondering what you should not do, watch this movie and you can just make a big gigantic checklist of things to never do. Now, this isn't a perfect movie. Those two things don't kind of rise it up to a 10 out of 10. There are some flaws in this movie, so let's start talking about the bad. Everything. Every single thing about this movie is bad. Every decision is bad. Every decision is wrong. If ever there was a choice, should you do this or this, the one that the director and the writer chose was wrong. The guy's name is Tommy Viciao. I don't actually know how to pronounce his last name, but he wrote it, directed it, 
and started it. The whole thing. So there was one guy that had a vision to construct a story and make a movie and de- dedicated a big chunk of his life to this. He is, as the upcoming movie starring James Franco is called, he is a disaster artist. An artist, <laughs> what he created was a total disaster. And having watched this, I understand that title because there's something magical about something this ill-conceived with... Uh, <laughs> it's astounding. It, I, like before I watched it, I'd seen some of the clips and I was like, oh, that's funny. That's bad acting. Can I sit through an hour and 40 minutes of this? When I saw that someone requested it, I was like, can I really do this? Do I want to do this? Is this going to be a, a nightmare to sit down and do this? And no, it's not. It's absolutely amazing to watch this type of train wreck unfold in such incompetence beautiful incompetence in the love of So let's kind of walk through just how bad it is and why it's so bad. So starting off from the get-go, as big pictures you can get, kind of just looking at this thing from a wide perspective, the genre. If you were to ask me, what is the genre of this movie? I'd go, well, it's a tragedy or it's a love triangle romance gone bad. But it doesn't, it's not really that. It doesn't come off romantic. It doesn't really play out like a tragedy until maybe some of the, where things start to go with it. And then as you're watching it, there's all sorts of like erotic scenes. And so luckily I didn't watch this one with a group of my friends from church, but, um, but like erotic scenes in it um, that are like out of nowhere. Like, I mean, just like, what? And like the stuff that back in the 90s were on the scrambled channels that was just all out like weird um, love scenes for the sake of gratuitous love scenes and um, out of nowhere. No, like my wife and I are watching this and it's like, whoa, what, what, where did this come from? What, what did we just cut into? And so it's not really a romance. It's not really a drama. It's not really a tragedy. It's kind of the tragedies are rotten. I mean, all over the place. And in the middle of the movie, there's like a drug uh, shakedown scene. Doesn't tie into anything. Just like you're watching the movie and then suddenly, boom, guys getting shaked down on drugs. And so... Like, what kind of movie is it? I don't I don't know. I couldn't tell you the genre. And that's a problem. When, just on the most basic level, what type of movie was he trying to make? I don't know. I have no clue what movie he was trying to make. So moving from genre, let's get a little more specific. The story. So the central story is kind of this love story between Johnny and Lisa and Mark and Lisa doesn't like Johnny and she kind of likes Mark and she starts sleeping with Mark and Johnny doesn't know then Johnny kind of knows and kind of can and in a better movie this story that they're trying to tell would be an exploration of why people stay in relationships they shouldn't be in and why people choose um, uh, security over love and why that leads them into temptation and how friends can betray their friends because they're in love. Like in a better movie, it would be an exploration of these sorts of ideas of the actual human experience of the complicated nature of relationships and love and friendship and how our emotions drift us in directions and they make us compromise our values and our morals and betray our friends. None of that's in this movie though. That's not what the story is. It's just, it keeps repeating over and over again I don't love Johnny anymore. He's boring. I don't want to be with him. And then Lisa's mother going, you should be with him. He has money. And so then the next cuts to the next scene and she bangs Mark, the friend. It just keeps repeating that. It does not explore on any level. Why is Johnny with her? Why does Johnny want to be with this horrible woman? Why does she stay with him? Like, like, other than the mom saying stuff, why does she choose to stay with him? Because she doesn't love him and doesn't seem swayed by the mother's arguments. Why does Mark keep doing what he... It doesn't explore any of this. It just keeps repeating the same scenes over and over again with the same exact dialogue, same exact... Over and over again. And there's no... Like, it does not expand on anything. It just keeps repeating things. Even within scenes, it will repeat the same thing. There's a scene later in the movie with a confrontation between Johnny and Mark where Johnny starts to figure out something's up with him and Lisa. So he confronts Mark and they like kind of get into a little fight and they're like at a party. People break it up and then it cuts to another segment of the party 
And the exact same thing unfolds where Johnny's like, wait, are you doing something funny with Lisa? And then like a fight breaks out and people break it up. The exact same thing that happened 30 seconds before happens again as if he was just writing it and had two ideas and was like, I'll just, I'll just do both of these scenes. They're both pretty good. The, like the story doesn't go anywhere. It just keeps repeating ideas, repeating, 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 repeating the same way I keep repeating because that's what keeps happening in the story. And uh, so just on a story level, it doesn't explore themes, ideas. The subplots don't tie into it. It doesn't build on anything. It just ha it has a central starting conflict that repeats it. And then you get to the end and it just does something. Just there's just a finale. And you're like, whoa, where did that come from? That escalated really, really fast. Just out of nowhere with no understanding of anyone's motives and why they're doing it. And like, like Mark seems like this best friend that feels guilty about what he's doing until randomly he's really angry anytime he's called out on things. And so it's just like no one's motivations are consistent. Lisa just seems like this horrible person that's just a two-faced and you don't know why anything's happening. And then my favorite thing about this, there's weird random characters that you don't know why they're in it. So in the opening scene of it, Johnny and Lisa are at home. Johnny gives Lisa a dress. She puts the dress on. And they're talking kind of like, you're, you don't really know who either one is, but you're figuring out, oh, I guess they're dating. And then like this 18 year old kid walks in and it is staring at them creepy and talking to them creepy. And then Johnny goes, I'm gonna go upstairs and take a nap. So he goes upstairs to take a nap. Lisa jumps in bed with him. And then this 18 year old kid jumps in bed with him. And you don't know who any of these characters are. <laughs> And you don't know who the kid is till like 45 minutes into the movie. You're just like, what? Who's this creepy kid that keeps showing up and jumping in bed with grown adults? What is going on? And that's, that's the whole movie is weird things like that. You don't know why, who, characters just showing up. No construction of plot, no more forward momentum. Things just keep happening. Then we get to the dialogue. I... I I'm not going to say anything about it. I will just share some of it with you. Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I used to know a girl. She had a dozen guys. One of them found out about it, beat her up so bad she ended up in a hospital on Guerrero Street. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Yeah, you can say that again. What's new with you? Not much. Still going to the movie tonight? Oh, sure we are. What kind of movie are we going to see? Well, we'll see... Danny, don't play too much. It may not come out right. All right. Let's toss the ball around. Okay. A new client at the bank will make a lot of money. What client? I cannot tell you. It's confidential. Oh, come on. Why not? No, I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? Moving down from there, we'll move into the acting. Everyone's performance in this is overcooked or totally monotone. So overacted where the emotion is just so on the nose, in your face, screaming anger or awkward monotone like... They're trying to remember a line, but they can't, it was just read to them and they don't know any inflection or emotion to put on it. So they're just saying things that don't go together. And you're like, what? Like, I don't, what? That's the whole movie. So once again, I can tell you that, or I can show you it as I've already shown you some of this. You are lying. I never hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa. Why are you so hysterical? Do you understand life? Do you? I bought some drugs off of him. Things got mixed up. I didn't mean for this to happen. <laughs> I don't have them anymore. What kind of drugs, Denny? It doesn't matter. I don't have them anymore. It doesn't matter? How in the hell did you get involved with drugs? Uh, what were you giving them to him? Selling them to him? Where in the hell did you meet that man? What kind of drugs do you take? It's nothing like that. What the hell is wrong with you? I just needed some money to pay off some stuff. How much do you have to give him? This is not the way you make money. How much? Stop ganging up on me. And finally, we'll get into editing. This was probably my favorite bad thing about this because it was so distinctly 
horrible editing. So when you talk about editing a movie, there's kind of two aspects to it. There's like scene flow, how an individual scene plays out like smoothly so you don't notice the editing, and story flow, so that the actual narrative being told flows together nicely that builds tension, builds drama, and is building to a specific point. Those are the kind of the two key things to edit it. Scene flow, story flow. This one gets both very, very hilariously wrong. So on the level of just scene flow, that's the idea of removing continuity errors so you don't notice the editing that you just go through a scene and see it unfold. This one, it, it plays like a parody of a bad movie. It's that level of bad. Yeah. So two people will be talking for 10 minutes. They're just sitting there talking, da, 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 back okay, and forth. Danny? And then it'll cut to okay. a new scene, and okay? there's a person just okay. sitting next What's to them. Okay? I want to know what was not there in the period of these Stop. 10 minutes. They just appear out of nowhere in the scene next to them. Or you're in a scene, there's two people sitting in chairs talking to each other, and there's another person over here, and they show a wide shot of the person over here talking to them, and then it cuts to a close-up, and the person is right there next to them. Just as noticeable continuity scene flow issues where you're like, what? What? Where, where did this person come from? Just uh, in some like TV shows will parody bad editing like this in it and it'll just do this sort of cutting. You can't top what they actually did in this one. And there's actually a, a scene in this where it cuts from one scene to the next scene and there's missing frames. So it cuts and it goes to black. Like you think you just that, like you blink too long or something and the lights just cut out. And you're like. What just, like, why did that go black for a second? I actually rewound it. I was like, were there missing frames? And yeah, when they edited it, they missed two, three frames to cut out. And so it just flashes black between two scenes. Along those same lines, moving from scene flow to story flow, it's a little bit tricky to fl have a story flow when there is no story. It's just repeating ideas over and over and over again. This one still manages to be impressively bad in the story flow. So as you're watching through it, um, you're basically waiting either for Lisa and Johnny to get married because they're engaged and they keep talking about their upcoming wedding, or you're waiting for something bad to happen for Johnny to find out something like that. As you're watching through this story, you get to a point in time where suddenly it, cu it cuts to an image of a chapel and then it cuts to... Thank you. Yeah. All of the guy, every man in the movie that you've seen up to this point in time, in a tuxedo, like they're about to go get, like, about to go walk down the aisle. I mean, it literally, I mean, you're thinking, oh, I guess this is their wedding day. Why are they getting married? Lisa's doing all this other stuff. She, what? Why? And you're confused. And you're very confused. And the scene plays out. And they start playing football for no reason. The whole movie, they're playing football. They just keep playing football out of nowhere. Um, and then it cuts back. And they didn't get married. It continues on. There's just this scene, hour, 10 minutes into the movie, 60%, 40 or 75% of the way through the movie, of apparently the wedding day that goes nowhere. It just cuts to it. 30, 35 minutes into the movie, it just cuts to a scene on a roof where the weird, creepy kid is being shaken down by drug dealers. Just out of nowhere, getting shaken down by drug dealers, and the scene's like 10 minutes long because he's shaken down, people come and rescue him, and then they lecture him, and all this stuff happens, and then we just go back to our story. Nothing to do with anything. No story flow, and so at, like as you're going through it, you're just like, what? What's happening? Like, What am I supposed to be, is this, this, is this gonna be a drug dealing movie? Are they getting married? Oh, is that where this is going? Oh no, it's none of those things. This movie gets a special distinction on my channel. It is the first movie ever to get a zero. A zero. It gets full blown no credit, but it is so wonderfully bad. It gets a special zero, which means it has looped. That's why it gets a zero. Looped back around and become amazing and has become again a must see movie. That is what a zero means. So bad, it loops back around to great and must see. So how about you, have you seen The Room? Is it the best worst movie of all time or do you have a better pick for the best worst movie of all time? Tell me your pick for best worst movie of all time down below in the comment section as I continue this series. Maybe once a month I'll do another potential best worst movie. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Also, if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, ranking videos every single weekend. But really, I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So join me down in the comment section. Get a lively discussion going on. Give me some recommendations for what you would like me to review in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.